Assalamu alaikum. This is Karman Hussein again um, with another stories of MCC. Uh, we are finishing up Women's History Month, so we decided to bring in another sister online. Today we have Sister Noor Abdul Fattah. Um, she is, um, she'll tell us a little bit about herself, but um, she is an MCC Academy graduate of MCC Academy, but I'll let her tell her story. So, so welcome, Sister Noor. Uh, welcome to this little mini podcast. Alaikum assalam. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate um, you being here, but I just want to get started by, you know, you can just tell me your story. Tell us a little bit about yourself, where you were born, um, where you're raised, what you're doing now. All righty. So, Assalamu alaikum. My name is Noor Abdul Fattah. Uh, I am a Palestinian American. Uh, I was born in the city of Chicago to a Palestinian immigrant as well as a Palestinian refugee uh, and raised in Morton Grove uh, before eventually moving to Glenview um, when I was in junior high. I graduated from MCC Academy in 2011 um, and I'm the youngest of six. My oldest brother was part of the first graduating class at MCC Academy. Um, and once I graduated, I eventually attended Regina Dominican out in Wilmette um, and graduated from there in 20, uh, 2015. And then I attended Loyola Chicago for my undergrad where I double majored in psychology and political science uh, as well as minored in Spanish. And right after I graduated, I actually began working at Lurie Children's Hospital in downtown Chicago as a research coordinator where I actually um, work on a study that merges both my psychology and my political science degrees. Um, so what we pretty much examine in our study um, is the physical as well as the mental health well-being of minority youth uh, with type 1 diabetes in the city of Chicago. So what we've initially done was we would follow the families for two years and complete um, home visits throughout the city of Chicago. But once the pandemic hit, we actually had to completely go remote. Um, and so now we complete these home visits um, virtually. And um, because of the COVID pandemic, we've actually recently applied for a grant regarding uh, just examining the role of, or the influence COVID-19 has had on our families, uh, specifically just because we know that minority um, families have been heavily affected by this uh, by this virus. So that's what I've been doing. Uh, and that's what's been keeping me busy these days. Okay, so you said you graduated just a couple of years ago. That's correct, yes. So you have been in the workforce for a couple of years. So um, we can go, uh, it seems very interesting actually, we can go on and on about your uh, career, but I think people want to know a little bit more about yourself. Um, you, you said you graduated from MCC Academy, um, but your, your aunt also taught there, or is she te still teaching there? So if uh, you can tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah so my aunt uh, has actually taught Arabic and Quran at MCC for 20 plus years. Uh, my older brothers actually started um, in the MCC Chicago Saturday School when they were younger. Um, and my parents actually decided they wanted to stay on the Northwest side just so that my brothers and I could attend MCC Academy when it eventually opened. Um, so my parents were out in Lakeview for the longest time, taking five boys every single day back and forth to MCC. Um, and then once I came along, they were like, you know what, we're just going to move out to Morton Grove, be extremely close, um, because they knew that I was eventually going to attend MCC. Um, and we've been in the community for I want to say about 40 years almost. Awesome. I think one, uh, some people don't uh, know, but um, your family, um, your dad and your family business where you guys distribute candy. So all the candy that's stockpiled at our um, vending machines is provided by the Fatta family. Also, we did an eat celebration and um, you guys were generous enough to provide um, the candy for the kids um, through that as well. So not just being students, but you guys are also helping out the community with, um, you know, your work. Um, so a little bit about a um, little fun fact about you is that you also met, you know, we won't get into the politics of President Obama, but one fun fact is that you actually uh, got to meet President Barack Obama when he was president. Can you tell us a little bit about that and how that happened? 
Yeah. So um, something about me ever since I would say I was an MCC is I like love writing and reading. Um, you know, ever since I was a kid, I, I couldn't tell you what I wanted to be when I grow up, but I, I knew I love to read and I, I love to write. Um, so I had actually just finished my first um, year of undergrad. Um, and I was going through that, you know, two week period where I was just extremely bored. None of my friends were done with their semester. I still didn't start any internships. And so I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna write the president a letter. Um, I've never written any elected official a, uh, a letter before. Um, and so I um, looked at the White House website, I noticed that President Obama reads 10 letters a day, but I also took note of the fact that he receives over 10,000 a day. So I was like, the fact that he's ever going to read this is slim to none. Uh, so I actually wrote it up in like an hour and a half. I looked it over maybe two or three times, um, and then I submitted it. Uh, something that many people actually don't know <laughs> specifically about this story um, is that in the beginning of July, I was actually in MCC Morton Grove for Jama'a Salah, and I left my phone in my car, and I come back and I look at my phone, and I was like, I usually get missed calls. I never get it from a Washington, D.C., area code. So I was like, once I get home, I'm going to check this voicemail because um, it was about a minute long. Once I got home, I clicked on that voicemail and there was a woman on the line saying, hi, I'm calling from the Office of Presidential Correspondence at the White House. I was wondering if I could speak to you about a letter you wrote to the president. Um, if you could please give me a call back, that would be great. Um, you know, it took me some time to like actually process what was going on. And I called my older brother um, and he, being the older brother that he is, was like, that's probably one of your friends prank calling you. I'm like, I don't know anyone who has a Washington DC area code. He's like, then call them back. And, and that's what I did. And then a few weeks later, um, I was invited to a presidential ceremony where I actually um, met President Obama. And then um, I actually, that was in 2016. And then a few months later, he had his farewell address in Chicago. Um, and I was able to go uh, and see him there again. Um, and alhamdulillah, it's been a surreal experience um, and something that I still I still think is a dream, but alhamdulillah. Uh, if you would like to tell us, if you don't want to, you don't have to, what, what, what did you, what was the letter about? Yeah, so my specific letter was um, about growing up American Muslim, uh, just the sacrifices that my parents made for my brothers and I, um, and just um, the fact that, you know, we've um, alhamdulillah, like pursued the American dream and, um, are very grateful to you know live the life that we were living in the country that we're living. Um, they actually asked me um, before I, I actually met President Obama if they could publish the letter on the White House website, which they did. And then uh, a year and a half ago, one of the uh, former staffers for Obama published a book with um, some of her most memorable letters that President Obama received. Um, and she actually included mine. And so when she was in Chicago for her book tour, um, I was able to go um, and attend and participate. Um, so that was pretty neat as well. Awesome. That's that's, that's an amazing story. I didn't know that that actually happened. So yeah, you mentioned uh, your letter being about your family. So wanted to delve into that a little bit. What, how did it feel being the youngest girl, sister of uh, growing up with five older brothers? Um, Alhamdulillah, I mean, it's taught me a lot of patience. Yeah. Um, I think, um, knowing, knowing your brothers too, right? So, right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, Alhamdulillah. I mean, right now they're, I mean, they're my best friends, but at the same time, they're also my biggest bullies, but my biggest supporters as well. Um, and my oldest brother is actually 16 years older than me. Um, and my youngest brother is six years older than me. So there's quite an age gap. Um, but I, Alhamdulillah, I'm at the chapter in my life where I look at them as, as my mentors sometimes. Um, some more than others, but, you know, I'm grateful yeah. for what I have. <laughs> Since they're a lot older than you, they were, you were like the baby, baby of the family, right? So hopefully not too much bullying going yeah. on. Yeah. yeah. More like parenting. They're, they're your, <laughs> like third or fourth parents, right? Exactly. Um, so so uh, can you tell us a little bit about your parents? Um, uh, you said they were refugees or they came um, to the United States as refugees. Can you tell us a little bit about their struggles to come here um, from Palestine? 
Yeah. So my mom actually um, was a refugee of the 1967 war. So my grandfather, my maternal grandfather, uh, used to be head of security at the um, resting place of Prophet Ibrahim in the Khalil, the Masjid um, Al Ibrahimi. Um, and during the 1967 war, um, my mom was just a little girl. They had actually warned everybody that the, the borders were about to close. And so, alhamdulillah, my, my grandfather had the resources to, you know, pull his family out. And he took them to Jordan, which is where my mom grew up. And then my uh, father, um, my paternal grandfather actually came to the United States in the 50s, the same exact year that my dad was born. So my dad actually didn't meet his own father until he was a teenager. Um, and he eventually um, came here with his father. Um, my grandfather had returned back to Palestine um, and brought his kids over um, for a better life. Um, my grandfather originally was actually in New York. Um, and then when he came back the second time, decided to come to Chicago. Oh, wow. So um, quick question. So I know you're, uh, I know one of your brothers really well. He goes back to Palestine often. Have you gone back? And do yeah. you go back often? Yeah, so I, I go, I go back pretty often. Um, it's, um, I haven't been since uh, right before the pandemic. So in 2018 was the last time I was there. So you go quite often. And mm -hmm. you have, fam you, you still have a lot of family. Yes, uh, especially on my mom's side. My mom has a lot of her cousins still there. Um, so we always have family there as well. Cool. So one, one question I want to ask you. So, you know, in the city of Chicago, um, you guys live in Glenview, the north side. So there aren't too many Palestinians in this area. Yeah. And we know in the city of Chicago or Chicago land area, a lot of the Palestinians end up going to Bridgeview um, and, you know, in Bridgeview, Moss Foundation, uh, the other masjid there. And, you know, just in that surrounding area, you know, there's tons of Palestinians that live there, Palestinian Americans. Can you, have you ever talked to your parents or have they ever talked to you about why you guys ended up staying in the north side instead of going down? You know, they have a great school over there as well. So instead of being closer to people that you're familiar with or, you know, have the same background, why you tended to stay, why you guys stayed on the north side, which is predominantly, you know, not Palestinian or not Arab, more Indo-Pak. Um, was there a reason why? Was there, you know, any specific reason why? Yeah. So um, I've actually asked my parents that question specifically because my dad's side of the family resides in that area. Um, so I was always curious as to why we didn't move near near them. Um, but I think um, what I heard from my parents was that because my grandfather and my dad were here for a really long time when they first um, got involved with the MCC Masjid and eventually the MCC school. Um, my brothers were having a great experience. And even though my um, uncles on my, on my dad's side decided that they were gonna move to that area, they wanted to stay on the north side um, just because they wanted to, to go to, um, they wanted their kids to go to MCC um, because they had such a great experience. And personally, I'm very grateful they made that decision. Um, I am Palestinian American, but I haven't had a, a really close Palestinian friend that's American up until I went to college. Um, so. Oh, wow. Yeah, we tell your, one of your brothers, Wally, we tell him uh, he's an honorary Indian. I'm sure he'll be happy with that. So um, um, on I that note. I don't. Yeah, on that note, um, you know, you grew up um, as a woman going to MCC Academy. You went to Niles West. Oh, you went to Regina, right? An all girls school. And then you went to Loyola um, University. Um, can you tell us just because this is Women's Women's History Month, um, and you <laughs> grew up with uh, five brothers? Um, can you tell us any? You know, obviously your mom and your aunt, um, as a teacher, uh, probably had a profound impact on you. But just in general, your experiences growing up as a woman, um, a Palestinian woman, a Muslim woman, um, growing up in the MCC community, not necessarily the MCC community, but just growing up in this area and um, how that's impacted you. And then we will end on that note. Yeah, so I, I definitely think, alhamdulillah, like I'm very close to my mom and my aunt, um, but I also had like, I've made lifelong friends at MCC that until today, I still keep in touch with them. Um, and talk to them, if not on a daily, but weekly basis. 
Um, so I think that my foundation was pretty much solidified and strengthened because of um, MCC Academy. Um, specifically on the top of my head, I can really think of, of Mrs. Baraka who taught me uh, Islamic history and social studies throughout junior high. Um, every single time I visited um, MCC Academy in high school and the few times in college, I've always made sure to like visit her. Um, I think just um, those like strong Muslim female role models have helped shape me, um, especially because I, I grew up with no sisters. Um, a, a lot of my friends still continue to, to inspire me and, and I'm very grateful to have had that experience because I think MCC specifically gave me the opportunity to meet Muslims that didn't necessarily look like me. They came from different backgrounds. Whereas I feel like a lot of my Palestinian friends that grew up in like the Bridgeview area had a much harder time in college um, interacting and, and making friends with Muslims who weren't Palestinian because they just weren't used to having people who look different than them inside their circle. Whereas I had some of my best friends were Bosnians or African-American Muslims or like a lot of South Asian friends. Um, so I'm very grateful that I had just that diverse group of like female Muslim women um, who've always inspired me. How did you, how did you like going to, uh, one last question, how do you like going to Regina? It's a Catholic school, correct? Correct. How did you like doing that, uh, interact? Obviously it's a lot different than MCC Academy. And I'm sure there weren't, I assume there weren't too many Muslims there and you were a Muslim Palestinian woman going to a Catholic school from a Muslim school. Right. Um, it was definitely um, a transition, but a, tran a transition that I'm, I'm very grateful for because I learned so much. Um, I think, you know, I started off at Regina where like a lot of my friends would ask me like, oh, like, where, where are you from? Or like, where's your family from? And I'd always say, you know, like I'm Palestinian. And their initial response, because a lot of them were came from like conservative Catholic families was like where Jesus was born. And I'm like, exactly. And um, it's it was a it was a great experience because I think for the first time in my life, I was. I was asked these questions that people never asked me before, like why I, I believe in certain things. And Alhamdulillah, I had a really strong foundation at MCC and also at home where like I knew a lot about Islam and the morals and, and you know, the, the character that Muslims should have, but I was never questioned as to why. Um, and so a lot of my friends actually allowed me to strengthen my faith because they would ask me the really tough questions that I would have to think about and even ask my parents or my teachers about because I didn't necessarily know the answer off the bat. Um, and until today, I still talk to, you know, my, my, my Catholic high school friends and, you know, in a, in a world that's very secular, it's very nice and refreshing to see other people who Muslim or not uh, continue, continue to remind you how important God is and uh, how, you know, we are continuously in debt to God and, you know, we would, we wouldn't be here without him. So. For sure. Um, and, you know, people don't realize how many Palestinians there are that are Christian too. Right. So I'm sure you probably know that going to Palestine often, but there are a lot of Palestinian Christians out there as well. Right. So on that note, I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy day to talk to us. Um, inshallah, we'll put this on YouTube. It's Women's History Month is ending today. But we will post it on in the next couple of days, inshallah. All right. Thank you. Salam. Salam.